What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today I am going to show you how to create a simple hunger system. It's going to be a very easy bit to follow, so let's get started. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is open up my first person character blueprint, or whatever character blueprint you're using. And what we need to do is basically uh, go ahead and create a new variable. In this case, this variable will be the current hunger, so let's just name it hunger, and let's change this to a float, so it can be a nice number with decimals. Now let's just compile and put a default value for this hunger. In this case, let's begin with around 70 of hunger, right? And let's say that the maximum will be for now 100. So now what we're going to do is create two different custom events. Let's right click, create a custom event. And the first one will be increase hunger. All right. And then we'll right click, create another custom event, which will be decrease hunger. All right. So. Now with that said, when we increase hunger, we're gonna get the hunger variable, get it, and just add it by a certain amount. For example, three, right? Just uh, as an example. We could even pass this as a parameter, which is even cooler. So we could put like amount. And then we just need to get the hunger, set it, and then it will be this new variable, so it will update it, right? Great, so with that said, we just need to do the decrease hunger, which will be very similar, right? But also, let's first of all make sure that the hunger will not go more than um, 100. So we're gonna check if this is gonna be um, bigger than 100. And if it is bigger than 100, we are simply just gonna go ahead and get hunger and set it to 100, okay? So we're gonna make sure that it will not go over 100. Now for decrease, we're gonna do exactly the same thing, but of course the inverse. So we're gonna get hunger, and instead of adding it, we're gonna subtract it by what will an incoming amount. Let's just name this amount, right? Which was a parameter input from the custom event. And then we're gonna go ahead and just set the hunger after this. So we will update the variable, right? And then we're gonna make sure that hunger will not go less than zero, okay? And if so, we're gonna set it to zero and just print uh, hunger, right? Hunger uh, damage, and we will just go ahead and simply do uh, apply damage, right? And what we can do is apply damage to our character. In this case, damage actor will be self, so we'll damage ourselves and then put a base damage of imagine uh, two, right? Now, we will not cover, of course, a health system in this video, but I do have many of those, so if you want to check that out, go ahead, I have many in my channel, how to make a health system, then you can interact these two nodes with that. But anyway, now, of course, we need to make use of these two nodes. But there's one thing that I want to do first, which is showcase this on a slider, right? So we can see it on the UI. So for this, let's go back to our content browser. Let's right click, create a new user interface, which is gonna be a widget blueprint. Let's create a user widget and let's name this something as that will be underscore hunger. Let's open this up. And the first thing I have to do is go and add a canvas panel into our hierarchy. So that way we can start to add things into our screen. Then let's get a progress bar, put it, I don't know, whenever you prefer, let's put it like top, and the um, bottom left, sorry. And let's put the anchor to be at the well, bottom left. Now let's just go ahead and just change the size X and Y so it's a bit bigger. Now I'm gonna make it a bit exaggerated, okay? So we can see better for the tutorial. And then the thing is that this percentage will go from zero to one, not from zero to 100 like we have it on our uh, first person character blueprint. So just for, you know, a, a visual representation, let's put 0.7 as if we had 70%. I'm gonna change the field color to something as more orange as it's normally like that in survival games, okay? And uh, the thing is that now, of course, we need to update this percentage value depending on this hunger variable, right? So how do we do this? Well, what we can do is create a binding. So if we go to the percent, we can right click, sorry, left click, create a binding. And now we will create a new kind of function. So what we can do here is basically use um, get the player character that is in our level, which will be our player. And we're going to cast to the first person character blueprint or whatever character blueprint you're using to access that variable. Now we can get health, okay, which should be, sorry, not get, get hunger, not get health, sorry about that. 
And now, as I mentioned before, that value goes from 0 to 1, not from 0 to 100 like in this one. So the only thing that we need to do is divide this by the maximum hunger, which in this case is 100. And now that will return us a value between 0 and 1, and we can plug it in. So now the only thing left over will be to go to the first person get blueprint, go to the begin play, which is when the game starts, and right at the end of the input and all that stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and just create a new widget, which in this case will be the one that we just created, which is hunger, and add this to the viewport so it will be in the player's screen. And now with that said, you will see that if I go and press play, we indeed will have our hunger bar at the bottom left, and everything is linked. But the only thing is that, of course, we are currently not doing anything with those two custom events, right? We are not making use of them, so nothing changes. So just to test, okay, let's just right click, go and put, for example, uh, the one key, all right? So let's, let's type the bug key one, which is going to be uh, kind of a, for only the bug in testing. And let's put that when you press it, okay, we will call the increase hunger. And then we will just put an amount of maybe five okay and then let's right click the bug key two all right and let's call in this case the decrease hunger okay and let's put uh five also or three or two let's put two so now if you see and i press play you can see that if i go and press one my keyboard will go ahead and add as you can see only until 100 and then if i press two i subtract okay and everything works so the other thing i'm going to do is kind of use this to uh, custom events so what we're going to do is go ahead and just delete these two things and i'm gonna go to the begin play which is when the game starts right let me separate this a bit and what i'm going to do is basically go ahead and just call the decrease hunger uh in a loop okay every so often we will decrease the player's hunger so we will need to eat right uh, so let's just go in the begin play right when the game starts and we will call this uh, node which is the set timer by event so every so often in this case let's put it as every second in a loop so let's take this we will call a specific event what event well in this case we're gonna make use of this uh, decrease hunger event so we actually can bind it so let me go ahead and move these things around okay there we go so it's a bit closer and I'm gonna go ahead and just drag event to this other. Okay, so actually we cannot do that. We need to create a separate event, but it's okay. Let's just call this decrease um, hunger uh, timer. Okay, and in this case we will just simply call decrease hunger. Okay, as simple as that. Now let's go ahead and just put an amount. For example, we can put um, two just to put something right or uh, one. It's gonna be a bit better because it's every second. And with that, you can see that when I go and press play, at the begin play, we will begin a timer that every second, as you can see, it is it's decreasing by one, okay? In a loop, it will never end. And it's noticeable. We can maybe put it to be more often, right? And then the only thing I'm going to do is, of course, go ahead and, um, you know, um, increase our hunger when we, as you can see, that's decreasing if you Play co close attention to the bottom left so to eat let me quickly just create a little item that we can interact with with you know will be kind of a fruit so let's right click go to blueprint class create a nectar let's call this something as bp underscore fruit and let's open this up now let me just add a simple static mesh which will be a simple sphere uh, which actually is going to be easier if i just search here sphere there we go and this will be my prototype model, okay, just for now, let's put a 0.3 for example, and let's change the, you know, uh, this to kind of orange, okay? Imagine it is a fruit, okay? <laughs> and now the only thing I'm going to do is go and make sure that this sphere, okay, has collision, which will be required to be block all dynamic, okay, that's good. And then I am going to go and create an interface so we can interact with this fruit. So for this, let's right click, go to the blueprint section, create a blueprint interface. Let's call this something as BPI underscore um, eat. Okay, we can, we can just name it even interaction, something like that. But in this case, it's going to be easier if we just name it eat for this example. So in here, we'll exactly call eat. All right. And we will not need any inputs or outputs for now. So we can just compile, save. 
and now just um, go to our uh, fruit and eat. But there's something that we want, which I, actually I just thought about it. And we want an output because for each fruit, you might want a different amount of hunger filling in. So in this case, let's add a new input parameter, which will be the hunger amount that we will add. And as you guessed, it will be a float. So now with that, we can close this and just go to class settings in our uh, fruit blueprint and just add that int face, which is BPI eat. And now we have this new function, which we can double click to open this up. So from outside, in this case, our player, when we see this fruit in our level, we can interact with it and we will call this generic eat event, which will do basically a simple thing and you just fill the um, player's, uh, you know, mm, hunger, okay? Which will basically output that, um, that amount. What amount? Well, let's say, for example, we want 10, okay? We'll do 10 and we will also print a little string which will be like um, eating, right? And there we go. And we will don't really need to do anything more. We could just simply play a sound, okay, 2D. So we can just do like, um, I don't know, an interaction, like for example, this camera shutter. Of course, that's not really of eating, but you get my point. And that's it. Now in the player, what we need to do is detect this. So let's just go to an empty space, right click, go and type the E key, okay? So when we press the E key, what we will do is something called a sphere trace by channel. And this will be an invisible uh, right cast that will go from one point to another. And we will detect whatever is in front of us. Okay, in this case, we're gonna go ahead and just get a full camera. Okay, do I get um, world location? And that is where it will begin our line trace. And then we want to do another one, which is the forward vector, so we can get at the direction that we're looking. And we are only gonna go ahead and multiply this by right clicking, converting this to a float so it's a nice number. Let's put like 250, okay? So this is the distance that we will be able to interact with that fruit. Let's add these two vectors together and this will be our end point. Now, because this is a sphere radius, we need a radius. So let's put something as 15. And then the trace channel will be visibility because uh, it's basically what the collision will have on fruit. If I check here, Make sure that it is block all dynamic and visibility is checked to true. Cool. So now on here, the only thing we need to do is just put this to for duration for the bug. And you can see that when I go ahead and press play and press the E key, you will see this right cast going on. So if we have a fruit here, we can interact with that fruit. So let's go ahead and just make sure that we will only continue with a branch if we have hit something. And then we can get this out hit, break it, and this will give us all the parameters about what we have collided with. In this case, we are going to interact with the head actor. So let's just add a dust interface, implement interface uh, node, which will detect if we have that eat interface. If we do have that eat interface, we are just gonna go ahead here and call the eat message, okay? The eat function from the BPI. And the cool thing is that because we created a function, we don't need to go ahead and cast to BP fruit okay and then call the eat uh, function from there okay we directly can go ahead and do it generically with this interface so we can create different fruit blueprints and this function will be universal and it will work for all of them and now the only thing i need to do is just call the increase hunger uh custom event that we created and pass the amount as a parameter and that's it if i now go here into my world Go and drag my fruit, kind of make it like this, right? Go and press play and go and interact with this fruit, okay? Boom. As you can see, I'm increasing my hunger. Of course, right now we have the loop very uh, fast, so instantly it will also <laughs> decrease the hunger. Uh, we can maybe kind of play around with that with the timer but you get the idea and one last thing going to do is just you know delete the fruit after we have eaten that fruit so let me also increase this to maybe like 30 and now the thing is that in here we cannot simply go and do a, a destroy why not well because it will never reach the return node so it will not give us the amount that we want so what we need to do instead is basically you know, do it with a bit of delay but we're gonna add a delay here because well we're gonna add delays and functions so instead we need to do a quick like, kind of 
you know, patch, which is good to go to the main event graph, right click, create a custom event and call this destroy fruit, right? And then in here, we can exactly add a delay of, uh, I don't know, maybe like 0.1 second and then indeed destroy the actor, which will be self. And now from here, we can go and call that destroy um, fruit custom event that we created and it will work correctly because in here, it will reach this because we have a small delay. So we'll leave that space. And now, yes, if we go back to our map or level and just press play, go to our fruit and it is boom. We will feel our hunger and it will be destroyed. And there we go, we're good to go. So that's it guys, so if you found this tutorial helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to my channel. Remember I have full access to the prep files through Patreon or YouTube members. Check out my Discord server, you know, it's a lot. It's already it's more than 6,000 VF devs already, so go ahead and join us. Um, follow me on my socials, and now yes, with all I say, bye bye.